Hi everybody, this is a very quick tutorial to help you to get started with um, programming my arrangement of Game of Thrones. Uh, we're going to start, you should have the score in front of you, uh, we're going to start with um, the drum part at the bottom. Um, so from my menu on the screen there, I'm going to choose Acoustic Drums. And one of the first things I'm going to do actually before I record any drums at all, I'm going to change the project settings. So in the top right hand corner, tap on the cog. And uh, the tempo, the so the, the playback tempo for this is going to be roughly about 95 beats per minute. Um, but so the working tempo, so in other words, the, the tempo uh, at which I'm going to make my recordings, uh, I'm going to have much slower because there's so much energy in this piece. It's going to be quite difficult to record accurately if the tempo is too fast. I'm going to tap settings and this is important. So as time signature, if we have a look at the time signature on the score there, it says 12.8. I don't have that as an option on iPad GarageBand. So I'm just going to choose 6.8. And then for every two bars of music on my iPad, that will equate to one bar of music on the score. And it, it's quite an easy workaround. Um, the key signature of the piece uh, is three flats, which could be E flat major, but is uh, actually C minor. So I, I will change that at the moment because it could be that that could be helpful later on in the project. And then once I've done that, everything's ready to go. So I just tap off the screen. I'm ready to make my first recording. Now I'm not going to use a drum kit. I'm going to um, tap on the name of the drum kit and from percussion. You see on my uh, drum kit here, I've got Chinese kit loaded. It's possible for me to download other kits. So it's worth kind of having a look through um, to see what's available. And very much, uh, if you listen to the original of this track, um, you will uh, have a, a pretty good idea of what you want it to sound like. So do explore uh, different drums and different sounds to find the, uh, the timbre that you'd like. Um, so I'm just going to choose the Chinese kit for the moment. I'm going to use the big drum at the front. There we go. And the rhythm at the start of the drum part goes like this. And you notice when I just played there, I was tapping the first note of each of the group of five slightly louder because the triangular shape um, icon over the top means an accent. And what an accent does, it means play that note louder or emphasize the note louder than um, the notes that are around about it. And that just creates a real nice sense of character. Now, I'm just going to record the first. Um, oh, what should we do? Let's do the first four bars of this introduction. So I'm going to press record. Now, if we analyze that even just by what we noticed while I was recording it, there were some things that didn't work. And it might be it might be because the screen wasn't as responsive as I needed it to be all the way through, but it didn't it wasn't a brilliant recording. As I was going through, I was thinking about actually so much of this part is repetitive. So to help me um, to be thinking about that, I'm I'm gonna record it a little bit at a time. So let's delete that idea first, and now let's record just one bar at a time. Record. And then press stop. And what you'll have heard when you, if we listen to it back, is the first accent was perfect. And then the other accents were nowhere near as good. So straight away, we need to be critical when we listen to it. Let's listen if that was true. Yeah, so in fact, it was, it was quite a long way from being perfect. But the first group of five was great. So I'm actually going to trim it to just to get to that first group of five. Um, and then I can tap on it and go to copy and paste and paste and paste let's listen to it now oh, no, that's more like it's more consistent if i wanted to join those together hold your finger down at the end select them tap 
twice and tap on join and it will make it as if it was all in one take. Now I didn't quantize this and I wonder if uh, if I need to or whether garage bands worked it out for me. Um, I think I probably need to quantize this at one eighth or is it one sixteenth? Oh, now let's have a look. If we quantize it at one eighth, let's listen to the result. Clearly wrong, it misses things out. And if you look down at the score, it tells you why. Because the shortest note value um, is a, a semiquaver. Whenever we have semiquavers in a bar, then it has to be one sixteenth note. So tap one sixteenth note and go over it again. And that's perfect. Now, bar two is exactly the same as bar one. So I can tap on it and go to copy. And then make sure the playhead is right at the beginning of bar three and tap and then paste. And looking at bar three, bar three is exactly the same as well. Paste. And if we look at bar four, it's almost the same apart from the last three notes. So what I'm actually going to do, because I really like those accents that I've got on that recording, I'm going to go to paste. But then I'm just going to trim back the end because I'm going to need to uh, put something in there. Now, instead of pressing, trying to put the play line here um, and try and press record and hope that I don't go over any work, um, I'm going to tap on the icon of the drum and press duplicate. And I'm going to record that the end of that um, on the track underneath. And in that way, I'm not going anywhere near the things that I've made. Close the mix window if it's in the way. So I'm going to press record. <laughs> Okay, and that went pretty well uh, but if I double tap on it and go to edit I'm just going to listen to those three and just check they're all really strong because notice in the music they are all accented now the last one was a little bit soft so I'm going to tap on it and go to velocity and then turn it all the way up and just I might just tweak up the others a little bit as well there so let's listen to that So that's a good level of detail to have. And then just press done when you finish with the edit screen. Now you'll notice that you can now trim that down and slide it up. But you've just got to check then that it's taken all the notes with it. And it has, which is fantastic. So at that point, you can then delete the second track that you don't need anymore. So we've created the first bar, the first four um, bars of that drum part. And the next thing I'm going to add is the cello. So to add the cello part, I'll click on the plus. And this time I'm going to go to keyboard and smart piano. Now I could use a variety of string instruments to do this, but I find this is just a little bit easier. Um, so I will change the grand piano to um, other. And I've got three choices to make a string sound on this version of Garage Band. I've got strings pizzicato, plucking the strings. Well, it's not that, because it's not marked on the score. I've got strings staccato, uh, which is shorter notes. Um, and I've got string sustain for longer notes. Now, as we look at the, um, look at the cello part, uh, we've got, in the first two bars, we've got, um, they're quite short notes. It's quite a rhythmic part. It's uh, basically um, C quavers over and over again for the first two bars. So I'm going to choose string staccato. And press done. And then tap at the right hand end uh, on the red button. And it makes it into a piano keyboard. Now if I play one note, you can hear that it's kind of like a string sound rather than an individual cello sound. But it will be okay for us. Now... The, um, the C that you need to play is C2. There it is. Um, and so uh, you can see it marked on the, on the keyboard note labels. And if you don't have that on your piano, you can switch it on in your main iPad settings. Um, so uh, let's just record that. And so we'll press record. kind of the opener of the introduction. Um, the 
you notice if you look at the score, all of them are quavers. So a quaver is one eighth when we quantize. So let's go in and do that straight away. Now, I don't know why I did it, but when I looked at the music, or maybe I was looking at the double bass part, I could see that the first of each, the three groups was accented and it's not in the cello part. Um, I, the, I'll be honest with you, when I uh, wrote this arrangement, I, I didn't notice that. So um, I'll leave that up to you as to whether you want to accent them or not. Um, let's have a listen back to it. Okay, now the next bit of the cello is quite a bit more complex. And if you're not confident with reading rhythms yet, um, this is going to be a challenge. Um, but yeah, everything is there for a reason to help you to... Uh, uh, build some confidence as you go along so so don't panic about it uh, let's uh, just break it down to understand it a little bit more if you think of the first note in bar three in the cello part which is a g it's a dotted qua a dotted crotchet if you think of the length of a dotted crotchet it's the same length as three quavers so in other words instead of um, holding the the note down for one and a half beats that a, a dotted crotchet is, if it helps you hold it down for what feels like the length of three quaver beats, and you might just find it a little bit easier to follow from that. The second note is also three quaver beats long, or dotted crotchet, which is the C. Then we've got a little run up of uh, E flat and F. We know it's E flat and not E because there's an E flat in the key signature, so that's important to remember. Um, and uh, the other thing to remember is that um, two semiquavers is equivalent to one quaver. So if we're thinking about spacing of things, um, then uh, that's how that fits. So essentially, if we're thinking of this kind of six quavers in a bar, like we've got in our garage band session there, then um, those two semiquavers will fit within that first one, first quaver beat in, in that section. Then we've got a crotchet G, a crotchet C, uh, the two semiquavers again on E flat and F, and then we've got a long held D, which should take us to the end of what the space that we've got on our, our garage band. Now the sound, I'm not going to use the string staccato for this because these are longer notes. And even the, the short notes with the little run-ups run there, um, essentially they're going to be really smooth. So I need to create a new track. So brick wall button so you can see the screen, then tap on the plus. Again, we'll go to Smart Piano, but this time we'll change it to Other, and we'll go to um, String Sustain, and then press Done, and go to the keyboard. Now this you will need to practice more of, because this is a little bit tricky to play. It goes like this. There we go, and it's really tricky to play on your iPad keyboard. Um, but uh, remember, you can always edit um, to say how loudly notes are played. So if they don't quite ring out, don't worry, we can edit that afterwards. Let's have a go at recording it. I just held that note down as long as I could. Actually, I probably want it a little bit longer, but uh, I was worried it would loop round. So I can edit that afterwards. Double tap to edit. Go to edit. Um, oh, we need to quantize it first, actually. So um, to quantize, we've got those semi quavers, so it's going to be 1 16th. That also will make it a little bit harder to record because you're going to have to be more accurate. <laughs> Okay, so we can kind of recognize it, but there are some issues in there that we just need to improve slightly. So as we, we just look, I've, so I've zoomed in and I'm now listening very, very carefully to this. So that lower note is a little bit soft. So tap on the, oh no, it's not, it's too loud. Uh, that's, uh, maybe it's the gap that's the problem. Because when you, when when notes are, are kind of they have gaps in between them, um, then it can feel like something's not right. 
The other thing that can be an issue sometimes is what we call the attack time. So the attack time of a sound can mean that the sound, it, it almost sounds like it's late coming in. Um, so I'm going to get the velocities right first and then I might shuffle all of them up. So let's just have a listen one more time. Definitely. Definitely let's have a look at these. There it is. That's the, that's the one that's causing the problems. Uh, it, to me, it doesn't look like it doesn't look like we've got uh, too much of a problem with the velocity, but it's maybe just the length. So I'll zoom in even more. And let's make these notes so that they flow into one another. You've got to be careful, mainly to just the just the endings here. So that's why I've not moved the, the starting positions yet. And then let's just extend the last note. There we go. Let's have another listen. So we've got a really nice smooth melody. Now I mentioned before about just moving everything so it's slightly uh, comes in a little bit earlier. Um, actually, the way that I'm going to do that is not on this screen. I'm going to do it on this screen and really zoom in. And then just ever so slightly, just nudge it backwards, see if that's any better. Okay, so it's the tiny, tiny, tiniest little bit back, but it's made that so it fits perfectly in, uh, perfectly in time. Okay, so we've recorded so far, we've recorded the drum at the bottom. We've recorded uh, the cello part for the first four bars. And the next thing I'm going to do is the double bass. So the double bass, it looks like it's going to be very similar to the cello, but what you have to remember that in double bass music, it always sounds an octave lower than it's written. So it's written on the C2, the same place as the cello, but it's, it's uh, to be played an octave lower on C1, which will give us a really strong uh, kind of foundation right at the bottom of the chord there. So I uh, will go to a new track. We'll go to Smart Piano again, and again we'll uh, go to Other. And just as I did with the uh, uh, the cello part there, um, I'm going to start by going to um, Sustain, sorry, Strings Staccato for this first bit. Now for the second, for bars three and four, it's a little bit of a mixture. So you've got long note and some, and then some other long notes. So, so I may again do it to two bars with staccato and two bars with sustain. Let's do the first two bars anyway. So here we go. C2 is not low enough. So I have to press my octave down button, which is the little arrow to the left of where the zero was. And now you can see C1. There we go, really solid bass note there. Now let's record it. really solid even just by doing that so we'll, we'll quantize it at one eighth note just like it's written in the score as the quavers and then we'll listen to it again now i'm listening to it and i'm already listening critically and i'm listening to that i'm thinking there's some of those accented notes so in other words the first of each group of three that's just not loud enough so the first one was pretty good that sounded good but let's look at the, the next lot. So that wasn't loud enough. I'm selecting each of the beginnings of the groups of three notes. That was good. And that was good as well. Okay, listen to it. Good, okay. So uh, I'm going to create a new track um, to make the sustained sound so I can pl play uh, bars three and four in that bass part. So Smart Piano, change it to Other, 
and then to string sustain done and the red button at the right hand end um, again I need to find so it's not just going down to C1 you actually want to go another octave because it drops down as far as this G which is really really deep um, so uh, so the notes that are written for uh, bar 3 you're going to hold down um, the C1 for the whole of bar 3 and then you've got um, the three quaver lengths of a G and same again same again and then you've got these accents at the end and notice on the score that's vertically above the accents of the three quavers that we did in the drum right at the beginning okay so quite um, interesting orchestration of how the parts work together so let's record that part there Let's have a, a bit of an edit of this, so we'll open it up. And just as I was doing before, uh, I'm really looking um, to make these notes, kind of make sure they go as long as we can possibly make them. I have just overlapped some, which can be a little bit dangerous sometimes. Um, let's listen back to it. happy with that maybe towards the end these these could be a little bit louder yeah because they are to be accented let's look at that last one there we go listen to that end bit yeah it's good sounds good so far okay so um so that that is the first four bars for um, drum, uh, cello, and double bass. And uh, in the next part, we'll add the um, the flute and the uh, the violin one part.